Hmm. Yeah, um, welcome to this leadership development talk. Um, we're making it a bit of an interview, uh, so hopefully it'll be a bit more dynamic. I'm here with uh, Lona and Kiana from Mybem and Groomerit, and the topic is it's more of a testimony of how they went from a, a, a yeah, small DTS of 15 students up to a DTS of 70. So a little bit about the recruitment, a little bit about how what they did, the mobilization, and uh, I'm just going to head over to you guys to introduce yourselves and share the story. Yeah. I maybe can just introduce myself saying I'm Lona and like she said, uh, but I'm basically the here at Green Mode. We came in a little bit more than three years ago, me and my husband from the nations and uh, had kind of no, we did a DTS here and was staff one year, but been away from 30 years. Mm. So we had kind of no kind of knowledge about the base and was called radical back here to mm. lead the base uh, because of the growth we could see potential happening here, but also because of there was some issues here um, that they needed a more um, clear leadership. Yeah. And then Kiana is here, you have been here longer than me. Yeah, I've been here for uh, just over four years and I am leading now the January Fire and Fragrance School. So the DTS that's running here in January quarter. Um, and I came from Kona before here and I was working with Fire and Fragrance there. I was on staff there and then COVID hit, shut down everything. And I was praying, Lord, where, to, where should I go? And the Lord really highlighted the SEND movement that was starting here in Norway. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of how I ended up in Norway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that I think is maybe the growth we have happened in Norway is due to a single word of saying we have to invite in the scent and give yeah. us a base. But also we did some changes due to this because there was this growth of your culture of Gen Cs uh, coming to the to the base. And traditionally, there has not been a lot of people here on our base. It's maybe been more known like a base with uh, families and adults and uh, been more like a slightly introverted base. Uh, from we had a traveling team that Kiana yeah. was a part of and um, and then to kind of expand it in a different can you tell a little bit how it was when you came in yeah and then we can go from there yeah it's it was funny to go from a base like Kona which has like a thousand people or something to come here and it's primarily families and 25 of us I think was the original group of the send mm -hmm. traveling team mm -hmm. came who were all under 25 I think at the time and so we were the youngest people on the base apart from the children um, and you can imagine it was quite the shock for the base I think to have so many young people come in it was suddenly very loud very like a lot going on um, but it was really a different time for this community that it was really focused around families um, and I think that having young people come in it kind of like set something in spark and on fire in the base uh, to to see it shift the culture a little bit um, and bring some of that uh, DNA from a base that does traditionally have a lot of young people mm -hmm. so it was a different place of course but it was a yeah it was special to see how having just 25 young people shifted the culture so much yeah mm -hmm. And I think one thing that was good happening for us in this time when we were here is that um, I think we embraced the youth cultures yeah. and we actually wanted youth culture to be here. And I think that was the change that happened in leadership. And I think that is where we managed to do the changes of embracing it and saying we need to go by that instead of trying to get them into our format. And this yeah. is how the base is. This is how it should be. And I think that's where we said that why they maybe also wanted a little bit different dynamics in leadership was exactly that that we have leadership that can embrace the young one it's yeah. not threatened by them don't control them uh, yeah. don't get like oh no it'll take you one year to get the answer uh, so i think that helped you yeah definitely the change in lead yeah yeah so i think when luna and dog stepped into leadership there was a real sense in the community um where that our voices as young people really mattered and what we had to kind of say and what we were discerning from the Lord, the things that we wanted to see birthed in this place, it mattered and it was important and it was possible. And I think that that is what drew, started to draw people in because there was DTS running, um, but they didn't, maybe they weren't able to like keep the staff who could run them, I think was more mm -hmm. what it was than anything. Mm -hmm. I think that they, it was possible sometimes to have more than the number of DTS students they had, but to have staff here, it was, it wasn't a place where as a young person, you would maybe want to stay because you didn't have a lot of say in anything, or mm -hmm. you weren't maybe 
uh, let quite free. But when mm. you guys came, there was definitely a shift in that. And then I think like that's a real fundamental value of yeah. your leadership in mm. this space is just that the yeah. young people would be able to go forward in the things that they're dreaming. Like if you were dreaming it, okay, we give you permission, yeah. make it happen. Yeah. And it's, I think it's totally shifted this space yeah. and our DTSs. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we kind of uh, been thinking also mentality has been, we are actually, we are able to help and change the world and Norway. Yeah. And I think that the birthing for it was there. So we've been traveling a lot out on there. We have seen people saved. We have a traveling team. We have now three or four traveling teams yeah. different. Yeah. And we're having a um, new ministry birth out and we have worked a lot on our base. We have worked a lot on understanding what is the change we need to actually reach the young generation. So focus is we came up maybe with a very bold statement that we think we are a place to, that should host uh, Gen Z's. Mm -hmm. uh, for more making a kind of a forward runner because we think we are youth with a mission that means that is sustaining most of young people and uh, so we kind of made that relevant and that is where we have been out touring we have been out uh, recruiting for yeah. the DTSs uh, so our 70 students is not just done by thinking we're having a great play place but it's about being out inviting people in yeah. uh, media has been a, a huge impact on us how we're doing media from here yeah um, so it's, it's a kind of corporate. Definitely. Uh, mm. Yeah, I think that um, one thing that we saw a statistic recently that majority of people who do a DTS hear from their friends and that's why they choose to do the DTS. Um, so if you create an environment in your base that is thriving, mm -hmm. where young people are valued, where prayer and worship is really like uh, like one of the highest values and people are seeing genuine transformation, they're being valued um, and they're kind of being mm -hmm. championed in those mm -hmm. things to know God, to hear him, to see him made known, they're like actually believed in, um, then they're gonna tell their friends, yeah. yeah, like I, you should go here. Like it was actually very good. Yeah. And then in that, once we had um, a media presence mm -hmm. that was kind of, it had enough information in it, it showed really the culture of the base. Um, we, we, I have interviews all the time with students and a lot of them will say things like, oh, I heard about your base from somebody and then I looked at your Instagram account and that's where they're like, oh, okay, like I can kind of get the vibe. I understand what people are like doing mm -hmm. here, what it looks like people have fun here but it also looks like the presence of God is moving mm -hmm. it looks like people are getting pain but it also looks like uh it's yeah you're getting an opportunity to try new things and so I think showcasing the base um in a way that Gen Z can understand and interpret mm -hmm. really like gave this kind of sense of oh I understand what I would be going to and therefore I'd be more likely to go mm -hmm. there so mm -hmm. our traveling teams also represented that in the way that they came across I think yeah. having young people go to schools and churches and youth groups and like talk about what their experience is mm -hmm. living at Kadamino, then you get you you're showcasing the culture already. Mm -hmm. and so I think that that is a huge reason why people yeah. have wanted to start yeah. coming. Yeah, I think mm -hmm. so as well. Now you've actually just answered the one question that I was going to ask is okay. So what do the traveling teams do? Um, yeah. um, but I think another question that came to mind was. Um, you've like given some really good steps like how how to have the media how to have friends how to um do the traveling are there any other things that you can think of that would be really like keys that you found um in in making this happen mm. i think something we were talking a little bit about is the culture that you create here um and you were mentioning about mm. the culture of celebration mm. and how that's become like a fundamental culture mm. it's a fire and fragrance culture that mm. i think that this base has adopted and said we mm. we believe that to celebrate um mm. each other to celebrate differences to celebrate what the lord is doing and and champion those things that culture has really been embodied in the campus and i think that that's made yeah. a huge difference yeah. Mm. yeah and i think that is clue but also we are not a fire and fragrance space no. but and so you will find that we're having this school that is fire and fragrance but when you see around our staff, they're mixing up with all kind of different different ministries. So we're having a very like unity among all our ministries, and that's something we worked on. Um, so you will come in, you feel like the expression is there, but everyone is doing their own kind of in a in a good way ministries. Mm -hmm. And then we have a lot of kind of 
I think it gives hope. We believe that who we are and we believe the transformation, what we are doing. Yeah. But also we are having this kind of authentic lifestyles. Um, so there is no kind of show where we're putting yeah. on a show. We are very authentic. Um, and then, to be honest, I think we are hope. And I think that constantly come across wherever we go. Um, and then we have many different expressions and we are not afraid of the expressions. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think that is a key, the unity um, yeah. that, that we don't think of often as being um, important. And also the genuineness for, for Gen Z, mm. if you're mm -hmm. not genuine, <laughs> they can yeah. spot it. So yeah, that's can. really good, really good keys, yeah. Um, I, I, it's funny when you talk about celebration and the most important like thing about celebration, um, this year the Lord's been teaching me, is that um, it really is a foretaste of what's to come yeah um and so it's so it is so important to celebrate and we don't always do that enough um on our basis so that's a really good key as well um any other last thoughts or last words that you want to share with us this has gone really quickly <laughs> that's gone like do you have anything kiana um i think the one thing that i keep thinking about is uh, the culture of prayer and worship that uh, shifted from when i first got here to now um i think that having mm -hmm. a culture where you genuinely are like seeking out together the presence of the lord and it's not just in the schedule mm -hmm. um i think that can become a thing it becomes like oh yes we're now we're meeting and we're going to have worship together and now we're going to have intercession but really like having faith that god not only wants to hear us praise him or intercede mm -hmm. alongside him but he actually wants his presence poured out upon us and he wants to mm -hmm. like put in our hearts like a burning passion for the nations in the same way he has. I think that that is something very special to the space. And I hear DTS student after DTS student after DTS student say uh, the prayer and worship uh, that I was a part of, it was like, I haven't seen it or I've never experienced this. And I think that that is a really unique mm. and special thing, but I don't think it's unique in the way you can't have it everywhere. No. I think it's unique in the way that we've, we've, taken the challenge on mm -hmm. of going god we have faith for this that your presence is here and we want to meet you and count you and see like a gift of intercession poured out upon people and so we're going to like press into that that would yeah. be my thought on yeah. yeah and i think like we have built a good structure on everything we have here practically yeah. schedule wise yeah uh, whatever we have but on top of it we lead it spiritually the yeah. most important is That's that we really lead good. it spiritually so, mm -hmm. so then these think yeah, these keys are some things that yes, that can be multiplied in so many places. Yeah, prayer and worship. <laughs> That's it. Should be it. Should always be the the culture. I think, but just, like you say, sometimes it just becomes something on the schedule. So that's a great challenge to all of us. And uh, thank you so much for sharing and being with us today. Thank you so thank much. Thank you. All right. Bye.